Feel free to check out my tea public after the video and support me on Patreon. Watch till the end of the video for more. There's a scene in the film Urusei Atsura 2 Beautiful Dreamer where a man is reading a newspaper. It may not seem much until you realize what the headline reads. Gamera. I want another chance, just like Godzilla. The film came out in 1984, which was four years after Gamera Super Monster, which marked the end of its run in the Showa era. It's a shame that the franchise ended on such a low note, but deep down, people still remembered Gamera. One of these people is of course Noriaki Yuasa, who still held on to Gamera as he would direct a short film titled Gamera vs. Garasharp in 1991. Nissan Takahashi also tried to push Gamera some more. In the 1995 novel Gamera vs. Phoenix, which was originally meant to be a direct-to-video release, this leaves Kazunori Ito, the screenwriter for the previously mentioned Beautiful Dreamer, as well as Shusuke Kaneko, the man Dae would hire to completely revitalize the Gamera series in a whole new way. In 1995 came Gamera Guardian of the Universe, a reboot with so much to offer. Instead of being awakened by radiation, Gamera is a creature from the lost civilization of Atlantis, with a mission to defend the Earth from any otherworldly threat imaginable. The movie also serves as a soft remake of Gamera vs. Gauss, giving the classic enemy a huge modernized makeover, and has ties to Gamera's origins. These two aspects combined would make for some incredible world building in the series. And on top of Shusuke Kaneko and Kazunori Ito having their names on it, there is also Kao Otani as composer, and up-and-coming special effects wizard Shinji Higuchi, who was mentored by Tariyoshi Nakano on Return of Godzilla, as the director of special effects. There have been reports of strange anomalies consisting of people suddenly disappearing in a moving atoll. An investigation is held and it is revealed that the flying monsters known as Gauss are devouring whatever living creatures lie in their path, including people in- oh come on, you're really gonna eat the dog? As for the moving atoll, it is none other than the titular monster himself, Gamera, who has come to put an end to this menace. Though it isn't long until a super Gauss appears and fights Gamera. The first thing you may notice is the amount of care and effort put into the effects, as well as the monster designs and set pieces. Save for a couple of composite shots, these effects hold up incredibly well, especially during action scenes with such genius levels of cinematography, bringing them so much life with Kawatani scoring being the cherry on top. It also helps that the plot is straightforward, it's straight to the point while also being very subtle with the previously mentioned world building, in a way where the viewer does not get muddled and overwhelmed by it whatsoever. But there is another aspect to these films not many kaiju fans seem to touch on in general, and that is the characters. Compelling human characters in a kaiju film? Gee, what a concept! Jokes aside, Gamera Guardian of the Universe has a great cast, each member having outstanding performances especially Akira Onodera and Tsuyoshi Ihara, who would later go on to appear in Takashi Miyake's 13 Assassins. There are even appearances from Kojiro Hongo and Akira Kubo. There are also characters who would appear in later films, like Shinobu Nakayama as Naomi Nagamine and Yukijiro Hotaru, who was also in the Zaira movies. But the biggest name out of all these films will have to be Ayako Fujitani and her portrayal of Asagi Kusanagi. Wait, Kusanagi? Oh, uh, I see what you're doing, Ito. Fujitani plays a young woman who would form a telepathic bond with Gamera through an amulet. Fujitani is an incredible actress here, and is great in other films like Shikijitsu, directed by Hideaki Anno, and The Man from Reno, which also stars Kazuki Kitamura. It should be no surprise that Gamera Guardian of the Universe would end up becoming a hit, and next year came Gamera Advent of Legion, or Attack of Legion, if you prefer to call it that, or whatever this guy says. Gamera 2, Advent of Legion. This one happens to be not only my favorite of the Gamera trilogy, but my personal favorite kaiju movie ever, as I feel it encapsulates everything that makes these movies special while also being truly phenomenal. A meteor shower comes to Earth, and with it a swarm of alien insectoids known as Legion. These creatures have come to Earth to take it for themselves, as they are essentially intergalactic parasitic colonizers. Creatures who want nothing more than to spread their seed across the galaxy. And of course, Gamera has to put an end to it, as he would eventually face their queen, 
For something that seems so grand, Advent of Legion is surprisingly a very contained film, and it's very effective as it would have this sweet sci-fi horror edge to it, which can make it really intense and violent. In case Guardian of the Universe didn't have enough of that already. This film also marks a huge turning point for Gamera's character arc, where he's put in a situation where not only are the humans helpless against the Legion, but Gamera seems completely helpless as well. It's a good way to tap into Gamera's internal struggle as a character, and the relationship he has with humanity. Especially during the battle in Sendai, where the entire city is leveled after everyone evacuates. In the end of the film, questions if humanity will ever be redeemable, if it's ever considered a threat. And how far will a benevolent defender go, until it decides that humanity is no longer worth saving? Even Asagi grows as a character, and the bond between her and Gamera is eventually broken as her amulet shatters, which hints at Gamera's departure from humanity in the next film, which we'll get to soon. Also, this probably has the absolute best tokusatsu effects I've seen for a kaiju film, especially the outstanding design for Legion. The amount of sheer effort and work just to make that appear as good as it does on film is absolutely mind-blowing. Especially when she's doing all of these insane attacks when fighting Gamera. That and the miniature set pieces just feel too real at times. All of these make Advent of Legion to be a very important bridge in the trilogy, like Spider-Man 2 and the two towers in their respective trilogies. The film is an excellent transition between the events of Guardian of the Universe and the next film, Revenge of Iris. And of course, I cannot forget about the glorious Lake Texarkana dub from ADV. They got any cold beer in there? No, they don't. As a proud Southern American myself, I greatly approve. And what do you have for us, Colonel? Yes, Captain Dipshit. Our adversary is a bunch of assholes. Also, Colonel Watarase is a Chad. And finally, we get to 1999's Gamera Revenge of Iris, or Awakening of Iris. And hey look, another yellow submarine. This one expands upon the world building even further as we see an entire undersea graveyard of Gamera skeletons. And more Gauss are appearing around the world. As these attacks become more frequent, Gamera begins to act more careless, going as far as to put human lives at risk just to protect the Earth from the Gauss. Keep in mind, Gamera is a defender of the Earth, not solely humanity, which creates this unsettling disconnect when we see Gamera do things like this. The plot focuses on a young woman named Ayana, played by Aimeida, whose parents were killed by Gamera back in Guardian of the Universe, when he was fighting the Super Gauss. She comes across a very strange creature who she would name Iris, after her dead cat. This monster would grow and become more powerful by consuming the hatred and anger Ayana has toward Gamera, as she copes with the loss of her family, making the connection between her and Iris deeper and deeper. Especially after you find out that they actually have set, um, really good character depth. Kaneko, I love you, but what the fuck? And of course, Gamera and Iris fight. But not only that, it's also a fight to break Ayana free from Iris' power, as he basically takes her life hostage. This one is perhaps the most thematically layered of the three films, one that's mainly focused on emotional trauma. It's much more character-centric too, thanks to the plot, and it's nice seeing people who would end up becoming familiar faces in tokusatsu. While the CG may look dated by today's standards, it's... Pretty typical when it comes to Japanese films, but for a film like this in 1999, it's pretty sweet. In a way, it's like this movie set the standard for Japanese special effects going forward, and this would be the precursor to Shinji Higuchi's hybrid technique he'd later use in his Attack on Titan duology. Check out my review on that. I also like how in each film, Gamera's design just gets meaner and meaner. And if you listen very closely, whenever Iris does his cry, you might hear something familiar. I'm about to lose all 10,000 of my subs, aren't I? Also, I do have one complaint about Revenge of Iris. How does someone have a Sega Dreamcast and not have Marvel vs. Capcom 2? It totally breaks the immersion. Especially when you consider that the Dreamcast isn't signed by famous musician Fred Durst of the band Limp Bizkit. As for the ending, all I'm gonna say is that it is one of my absolute favorite endings to any giant monster movie ever. To wrap this all up, it is no wonder why the Gamera trilogy is often hailed as some of, if not the best, kaiju films ever made. It also happens to be one of the few trilogies in existence where everyone can agree that all the films are just absolutely phenomenal, 
but no one can agree on which is the best one. There are just as many people who love Guardian of the Universe the most as much as Advent of Legion and Revenge of Iris. Each movie is different, yet they manage to stay very tight together in terms of quality and it's truly remarkable. If you like straightforward and well-crafted monster movies, you'll like Guardian of the Universe. If you like sci-fi and horror with a mix of everything that makes a giant monster movie great in general, then you'll like Advent of Legion. If you prefer something that's more character and thematically driven, you'll like Revenge of Iris. But wait, what about the Dark Horse Gamera comics, Matt Frank's The Last Hope, and Gamera for Truth? Next time. Also, The Brave and other stuff. If you like what you see, then definitely consider supporting me on Patreon, where for a single dollar, your name can appear at the end of every future upload. Other than that, you can also get early access to videos, exclusive content, commission video requests, and receive a t-shirt of your choice from my Public. Like this design that celebrates the 55 years of Gamera. I would also love to give a very special thank you to John Wick Goji for becoming not only a new patron, but my 10th patron. Thank you very much. Once I reach enough patrons, I'll review the Yokai Monsters trilogy, so if that's something you'd like to see, then go support me on Patreon. Feel free to like, share, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and this is Titan Goji, signing off.